looks a lot smaller, but actually it's not that much smaller. We were 610 feet long, and she is a little, little I don't know what it says on the bottom there. Mm -hmm. But the armament is way different. Uh, the new one has one gun mount on the, on the bow, and we have, I don't know how many, there was three turrets of eight inch guns, two forward and one aft, and then the five inch, we had five inch all the way around, and then we had 40 millimeters and 20 millimeters <coughs> on, the, on the bow and the fan tail. So we had, she was actually a warship. This, this guy here, I talked to the skipper uh, last week, asked him what the speed of this boat will be. And he said, well, I can't tell you. But later, he leaned over and told me, he whispered in my ear what it was. And I'll tell you guys, it's 55 miles an hour plus this ship. So don't get in its way. I said, do you have seat belts on it? Thing? <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, since your, your ship, how many vessels have been made? Um, this is the fourth. Oh, Indianapolis. The last one was a submarine. Uh, now that was kind of insulting to me. But, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, the skipper of the su of the submarine who, who uh, retired his ship several years ago is on my board of directors now. So we captured the submarine. He doesn't even mention it anymore. Uh, if you guys have questions, I'd rather have questions than. And tell, I, could, I could tell you my story, but this must be some questions. I bet you a lot of them would like to hear the, what happened, the story of where okay. you were, what okay. you were doing. I'll, I'll, I'll go through mine a little, I won't go through the whole thing, but um, I, uh, I was in my last year of high school, senior, and uh, all my buddies and friends were enlisting or being drafted into service. So this was 1944. And uh, I, I talked my dad into signing me in. I was 17 years old. Uh, I couldn't get in unless he signed. So I talked him into it. And I went to boot camp in January of 45. And uh, got out in April. Actually, the day that President Roosevelt died, I got out of boot camp, April. 14th or something, no, something like that. Anyhow, anyhow I, <clears throat> on, uh, after boot camp, I was uh, shipped out here to the West Coast, and I got assigned to the Indianapolis, who was under repair at Mare Island. She got hit the first time in the whole war. She got through the whole war, except one time Okinawa, she took a suicide plane and uh, it kind of crippled her, and uh, the bomb went through the ship, killed nine guys, and uh, they got the compartment sealed off, and she made her way back from Okinawa to Mare Island under her own power, and that's when I caught, caught her uh, at Mare Island, and she was under repair. We were there until, uh, under repair till July of 45. And uh, how they were, they changed the guns, they changed almost everything. She looked like a brand new boat going out. I got, I was coming back, I was called off of Liberty that night. Everybody had to come back to the ship. They were leaving in a hurry. Uh, so we, everybody got back and we stopped at Hunter's Point. And, uh, and it's in, that's in San Francisco. And we picked up this secret package. It was, um, as long as this table or longer and wider ship. Yeah. And nobody knew it was, what it was. Even the skipper didn't know what it was. But he was told that this, if anything happened to the ship, <coughs> that goes in the boat first. So, the, and there was a big secret. The skipper didn't even know what it was. Anyhow, we, uh, we got out of San Francisco and uh, we are on our way to uh, deliver this, whatever it was. We delivered it in Tinian. It took us, uh, matter of fact, we have, still to this day, have the high speed run with this type of ship. We're doing like 39 knots, 
all the way to Pearl Harbor. And I'm telling you what, I never seen a, anything go through the water so fast as that old boat was doing. And uh, we got to Tinian, and they unloaded this on, onto a barge, this big sacred thing. And after we got out of, out of uh, them unloading that, we went on our way to Guam. And the skipper stopped for further orders, and we were on our way to the Philippines. So he got ashore, and uh, he asked for an escort, because we were going into the war zone, and they said, oh, you don't need one. There's no, been no, no subs here lately, so anyhow, we got we got left, and two days out of, uh, out of Guam, it was so hot that the skipper let us sleep wherever we wanted to on the ship. And we had assigned bunks, but it was so hot, we didn't have air conditioning on this ship at all. So I chose to uh, sleep topside, up for, um, I showed you the gun turrets, up under number two turret. That was, uh, that was our second night out of uh, Guam. And uh, I was to go on, on watch the next morning at four o'clock, so I went down and told the guys where I'd be sleeping. and. Uh, to wake me up in time for the watch. So I got up under number two, took a blanket and a pillow, and got up under number two turret. And uh, the, about uh, 12, five, 10 after 12 midnight, I, was, uh, I felt this, this ship shake, and I looked up and number one stack was on fire. There's steel debris blowing out of the the staff, I like, got burned on my arm, and, I, and, then, and then the second torpedo hit and rolled me off this, this uh, ledge about 10 feet to the next deck. And I looked over my, I went to grab for my shoes and went, the shoes went over the side. And I made my way back to the quarter deck, which is the middle of the ship. And there was so much confusion and screaming and hollering and I don't know what happened. So I uh, went to the port hangar and there was somebody in there throwing life jackets out. So I grabbed the life jacket and continued aft. My shop, I was a ship fitter. My shop was in a, on the fantail of the ship. On the way back, there was two kids leaning up against the bulkhead. One was wounded pretty bad. I gave my life jacket and I went back and got another one and came back to the fantail. And by that time I was walking on a bulkhead. She was, she was listing really bad. And uh, one of the guys standing on the rail said, you better get going, Barry, she's going down. I said, where am I gonna go? You know, there's no place to go. Anyhow, I climbed over the rail and one of the screws were out of the water, she was still turning. And I ran forward on the side of the ship to the quarter deck. And that's where I jumped off. I jumped in the, uh, I hit the water and somebody hit me, drove me down. I don't know how far I went down. Anyhow, I got back up I looked up and the moon was out. I opened my eyes and I, I thought the ship was coming down on top of me with a oil slick in the water. So I got through that and I looked back and she was up on her bow going down. And the guys were still coming off. Like, uh, have you ever seen ants on a stick? That's what it looked like guys were coming off the ship. And uh, I swam away from her and uh, I found a net all rolled up. And there was a kid sitting on it and we got it. <coughs> untied somehow it was a floater net. It had corks and ropes and so we got it floating out and uh, we, uh, over the whole night we picked up 151 survivors off of the ship and uh, that was our first night in the water and of course we start getting bugged. The next day was uh, we thought we'd get picked up right away but there was there was no radio contact. The, we would never got picked up. Uh, there was no nobody knew where we were or, or where we went. So we were supposed to be in the Philippines in two days, and once the two days were up, they took us off the board. Didn't even worry about us. But we were out in the water uh, on the first day. <clears throat> we had big hopes. We seen airplanes every day. They flew over us, and of course uh, we you couldn't see anybody in the water at five or ten thousand feet it's like looking at this rug there's at, you couldn't see anybody in the water and uh, then of course we were bothered by the sharks and uh, 
they were they were having their their good day and uh, we just had to take care of yourself. Uh, uh, I the, the way I survived the whole thing, uh, I kept to myself pretty much. And the guys were drinking the salt water, and, and you don't drink salt water. Because the guys are crazy in no time. Uh, you know, that's what the guys were doing. Uh, we didn't have any food or water. Uh, so the guys were just giving up and drinking that stuff, and, and they would do different things to your system and drive you crazy. And uh, so I, I met this old sailor on board. And I never knew him. I mean, I met him in the water. Never knew him before in my life. He was like 10, 20 years young, older than me. And he sort of took me under his wing and he told me what to do and what not to do. And I think that saved my life, uh, paying attention to him. And uh, in the daytime, I'd get out in the outer ring of the guys. And uh, at nighttime, I'd get up on the net. So if I did fall asleep, I wouldn't float away. A lot of guys did that. And... Uh, and the third and fourth day, uh, of course, got worse uh, as far as the survival. Uh, anybody that was hurt very bad never lived a couple of days. Uh, we uh, got on the, we seen uh, no boats. We seen a lot of airplanes every day, but uh, never never low enough to see us. On the fourth day, fourth and a half day, seen this dot in the horizon. As he got getting bigger and bigger and bigger, was this airplane come right at us, yeah. and and there's uh, over the years the pilot lived in San Jose. He uh, he was out on a bombing run. He was out looking for Jap subs, and uh, he had his bomb bay doors open. He came with the oil slick. He thought he had a wounded sub, so he came down, and he was laying down, holding an antenna, and he came over the oil slick that we were in. And uh, he saw, all he could see were heads, because we were in the water all every day up to our, our shoulders. And uh, he uh, seen us, we were yelling and screaming and waving, and he saw us. And he gave us a wing thing and took, kept going, and I said, get out of back. <laughs> he turned around and came back and did it again. But so, in order for him to, uh, Radio was staging, he had to go back up to about 7,000 feet. He told us that later. We, we uh, matter of fact, I used to go to his house at barbecues in San Jose after the war. But anyhow, he uh, radioed uh, his base, and that's when the rescue started. Uh, <clears throat> we didn't get res rescued till another day and a half after that. But he was dropping uh, stuff. He drops, I guess, some life rafts. I never got on one of them. But it was rubber rafts, and some of the guys got on that, and some he dropped some, uh, uh, like, uh, he dropped some cigarettes, but no matches, you know. <laughs> there was no, no kind of food. He didn't have any food, so anyhow. Uh, at that time, I swam away from the group. I, uh, he had dropped something, but I thought was a... Uh, a tank of water and uh, I swam to it and it turned out to be a uh, submarine detector it a, a big antenna and a and microphone and he told me as he said uh, you could have talked to me I said I didn't want to talk to you I wanted to drink of water <laughs> so I, he, I swam off there was a, a raft with two guys on it I swam to it and uh, got on and sometime during the night they disappeared. I don't know whatever happened to them. Uh, but the next morning, about it was still dark. The hit, this big spotlight hit me, and I said, "If it's the Japs, I'm getting on anyhow." But he, <laughs> it happened to be uh, a, a rescue boat from the Hollandia, not the Hollandia, the Bassett. And he pulled up alongside, and uh, he threw the ladder over the side. He could get on, sailor. I said, "Hell yeah." I couldn't even raise my arms out of the water. They jumped in the water and got me and put me in this basket and took me back to the mothership. And uh, once I got on the dry land, I, I passed out. I, uh, I think I woke up once uh, after they rescued 
uh, they picked up 151 guys that night that my ship did. And uh, uh, on the way, they took, I was uh, on a ship to the Philippines. When we got in the water, we got separated. There were three or four different groups. Uh, my group went to the Philippines, and one, one other group went to a hospital ship, and one other group went to Guam. And we thought we were the only ones alive until we got to the hospital in the Philippines and learned that uh, the other guys were rescued. There were 316 of us survived out of uh, 1,200. Uh, the big reason was being in the water all that time, uh, the exposure and the guys that were wounded uh, never lived there long. Uh, but we were in a hospital in the Philippines for a month and a half, and they flew us to Guam where we met the rest of the guys, and we were in a rest camp there for several weeks. And uh, then we all went home together on, on an aircraft carrier, which was pretty nice. And then we got to uh, San Diego. We didn't have any clothes. We lost everything, of course. Uh, we didn't have any clothes, no issues or nothing. We got to the, the base in San Diego and started issuing us uniforms. And of course, they didn't take time in measuring you. They'd give you a, a uniform and a hat, and sometimes too big, too small. And finally got that settled. And uh, they gave us a 36-day survivor leave. We went home for 36 days, and then they let us choose where we wanted to uh, be stationed because they were never going to let us go back to sea again. And uh, I chose to uh, a little air base out outside of Detroit that's away from the ocean. <laughs> so I stayed there for about another year and a half and got out of the Navy. Uh, I thought about re upping, but then I thought about it again and didn't do it. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> then I had my, I did uh, did what I wanted to do in my career, become a police officer, a detective for 23 years, and brought up this brat right here. He <coughs> was in one of my first classes. And, uh, Can you tell him what was in the sense. box? Yeah, what was in the secret cargo? Yeah, Pardon? What was in the secret cargo? What? What was in the secret what cargo? What were you taking to Kenya? Oh, the, 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 first, the first bomb that dropped on the shore of Hiroshima. We didn't know it until we got into it. <laughs> we got picked up on the 5th of August and he dropped it on the 6th of August. Wow. That's when we found out what it was. The second one was on the 15th or something like that. But that ended the war for us. That was, that was a good thing, I thought. What carrier did you come home on? Hollandia. It was a, it was a deep carrier, small one. Do you know somebody named Clarence Hicks? Who? Clarence Hicks. He was a survivor. Clarence Hicks. So I was standing back there and just looking on the table, look what I found. Here's a picture of the Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. August 10th, 1945 at Bear Island. Really? That's less than a month. And it's donated by Clarence Hicks. Now there's a printout back there because he was a part of the survivor. Group. And his daughter somebody donated it. And uh, I just looked down and I thought, look at that. Yeah. That was recently. <laughs> yeah. Was it? Yeah. You want, you want to and uh, sure. pass that around. It's, uh, that's, that's before she left to go get the nuclear bomb and head to Hamas. That's I have a question. Yeah. yeah see what um, you look being like? a mom, and he was quite young, and your dad's fine for you to get in. I have a son who's a sergeant in the sheriff's department now, and another son who's a captain in Iraq. So when did your parents find out you were okay? How soon did they know? Oh, uh, when did your parents get notified that uh, you were okay? Well, the war was over already when they got the telegram that I was wounded, and uh, that's all they said. They not to talk about it or something. They didn't I, know. I still have the, the telegram. They didn't know what happened to you. No, they never did. I never did tell them what happened to me. Really? Ever? No. Being a mom with kids in danger, that's that's kind of where my mind is. He still has original watch that he wore that night. Yeah. Yeah. 1215? Yeah, it stopped 1215. Yeah. And it's, still, it's, got, it's got 1215 and it's got oil and he's got the oil here. 
How old are you now? How old am I? Older than dirt. <laughs> 91. 91. Yeah. What was the water camp? What was that water camp at that time? Salt water. Is the, no, what, what, what was the temperature like? Cold was it? it was warm. It was like 80 degrees. But the night just freeze. It was cold at night. Yeah. It was all wet. Yeah. But, uh, there was a, quite a book written on that experience. Did you consult on that book? I can't hear you. Uh, the, the, the book that was written, did you consult? I can't have my voice in your head. Did you consult on the book? Did you consult on the book that was written? Yeah, well, it's the uh, book. There's a book called the in Indianapolis. Yeah. I don't know if it's here someplace. There's a new one out. The uh, new book was just came out. Uh, yeah. Well, I've read read that book. You know, it's, anybody, everybody ought to read that. We have one here. I just don't know where it is. And it talked about the original crew of 1,200. Yeah. Right. And then somebody went into the water, but it rode at like great length. About and you mentioned in your talk about the sharks having the holiday, and that's probably something you don't want to talk about. I, I'm not sure, uh, but as I understand, that, that was. I don't know the, the sharks were there. The, the story is uh, the rescue of living through the the, uh, the days. Uh, yeah. Every day was uh, just a bunch of. Oh yeah, of course. You just had to live for yourself and try to stay alive. Uh, you could. It was easy to die out there. It was hard to stay alive. Yeah. Uh, it was. Uh, I guess my age, probably, being from the north of Michigan, was in pretty good shape. Uh, kept me alive. Uh, and of course, I never drank the water or. or anything, uh, it was good advice from um, Patrick Dobbs. Uh, Salt water is deadly. It, 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 uh, I've seen guys, I don't want to talk about it. It's so bad shape you're drinking it. Yeah. And then, but once you start drinking it, oh, yeah, it's uh, like the hydrate you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So you went from two 